So I get asked a lot of times, what's the first mod you know you really should do to your three-wheeler? And I'm gonna tell you one of the first ones I ever really did and one that I really do like is widen the rear axle, widen the, widen the footprint on your bike. And, and there's a lot of different ways to do that and I thought today we'd talk about a couple of different ways to achieve that goal. If you can add two inches per side, that's a total of four inches total width. Um, I'm gonna show you some setups today that are gonna take that <laughs> way beyond two inches and uh, I, I'm not gonna advise it from the standpoint if you're jumping your bike do not spread your axle out like this uh, the more you leverage you put on that center carrier the faster you're gonna bend it um, don't do that if you are running in tight wooded trails you are not going to want to really widen out the width of your bike because you're going to catch a tree or you're going to catch a, you know, a root or a stump or something because you're, you know, it, it tire, that back tire is going to be hanging a foot out there past where it used to be. So please be mindful of that. So that's kind of giving you a little warning, a little heads up. <clears throat> so what I'm going to show you today is, is five bikes. I'm going to, we're going to talk about all of them in general, um, but we're going to talk about five specifically. So your hardtail bikes, which this is a 125, this is an 86 125M, it's a rigid bike, no suspension. This class of bikes, they normally run about 38 inches outside of the wheel to the outside of the wheel. Now that doesn't sound like very much. And really, if you look at the ground clearance on these bikes, they're not. And this is one of the reasons that the bikes feel tippy. You know, it doesn't take much to lift a wheel on one of these. And that's just because the back ends are so narrow. So the first thing I do on a hardtail or a suspended bike, that's it, it, it applies to all of them. It even applies to four-wheeler guys. If y'all are watching this, you know, in the closet, you know, I, we understand, we know, deep down, everybody wants a three-wheeler. Um, if you can widen out the rear of the track of your bike, your vehicle, it's going to perform better. It's gonna slide better. It's gonna handle better at speed. Wider is better. The only caveat to that, like I mentioned, is jumping the bike or narrow trails. If you're mindful of where you're riding and how you're riding, you can live, your, your bike will live for you know a very, very long time with a wide and rear track. Now, what I'm gonna show you today is four bikes, none of them, are actually a factory setup. They are all different variations from factory. And this is what we have here is I have four 200Xs set up. We've got 284s, we have 285s, okay? So they're basically the same bike, tank color changes, seat color changes, none of these are original equipment, so please don't you know, criticize them in that way. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about how much difference the width are on each one of these bikes Based, and then I'm gonna to explain to you how we achieve that stance. So starting with the narrowest bike we have here, it's 43 and a half inches. This is this bike right here. Y'all didn't see that coming, did you? And we achieve that with a set of ITP wheels, they're eight by tens, and a stock axle. And that bike right there is pushing 43 and a half inches from outside of the tire to the outside of the tire. Just like that, just that simple. Aftermarket wheels have the offset already built in them. Most of the offset, uh, they're different between manufacturers, so you're gonna have to look into that. If you're not sure what the offset is, the offset is the backspacing. And the backspacing is literally where the hub mounts to the wheel. If this area here that the wheel mounts is more than center, towards the back, then the wheel's gonna stick out further. If it's more forward towards the front of the wheel, then the wheel's gonna be kinda sucked in. This is our narrowest bike set up right here. Stock axle, ITP wheels, 43 and a half inches. Our next closest bike is this bike. Okay, now it, it, it looks considerably wider, I think. You see how much the tire sticking out past the fender? Almost three quarters of the wheels hanging out there. And what we have here, this one's actually worked out really well. I like it. It's using a lot of stock parts. This is a stock axle. It's running 300 EX hubs. We're running factory 250R gold wheels and they're eight by nine wheels. The total width on this bike is 44 and a half inches. That's one inch wider than the bike next to it. Now that's not that big a deal, 
big a difference between the two, but a factory bike over here, you'll notice a huge difference. Okay, our next bike, you know which one it is? Do you think it's Van Halen? Or do you think it's the 85 down there on the end? Which one's wider? Put it in the comments. All right. Van Halen comes in at 48 inches. And what we have here, this is a combination here on this one. We have a factory axle. We have a 300 EX hub. We have a two inch spacer on factory 300 EX wheels and tires. I actually picked those tires and wheels up mounted just like you see them. It's a good thing about the four wheeler bolt pattern. The four on 110 pattern on these particular bikes is very, very common. All right, that brings us to our widest bike we have out here today. This one has a plus six Dura Blue axle on the back of it. This bike came in uh, late last year. Haven't done anything to it yet. We got it running and that's it. And, have, and probably haven't moved it since then. Um, it actually measures 49 and a half inches. And if you look, that tire is sticking all the way out past the fender. It is the widest bike we have here. And it's done with a plus six Dura Blue axle. So this is a custom axle. This is an aftermarket axle. On top of that, it is running factory hubs, as you can see. But these are actually Douglas wheels. These are Douglas wheels. They are a, a nine inch wheel. And I believe these measure nine by nine on the width. It's a common, that's a Douglas blue label. If you're into Douglas wheels, you know what that refers to, the blue versus the red. That's exactly how that bike came in, just as you see it. And it is a monster, look at that wheel. It hangs completely out past the fenders. And you gotta be mindful of that. You go ripping through the woods and you think you're gonna just barely miss that tree. <laughs> that thing is coming through there wide. 49 and a half inches on that bike. That's uh, that's huge. I'm probably gonna get this wrong. Somebody correct me in the comments. Please do, because we all need to know. I think the factory width on a 200X is around 40 inches. Um, I may be mistaken on that. I'll look it up and maybe put it on the screen or something. But we're talking 10 inches beyond stock, beyond factories that set up there. Some of these 10, eight, six inches, but you can see there's a lot of different variations, you know, where you want your back tire to be. I think this is a good look, three quarters of the tire sticking out. Remember the wider that tire is, the messier and dirtier your bike's gonna get. If you look over at this one, you see I still haven't washed it. I've been pretty sorry about that. But you get covered in the mud, mud going everywhere when your tires are beyond your fenders, but it looks cool. Now, the reason I mentioned the hardtail bikes, and I know these are all 200Xs, when you get into swapping hubs, a lot of guys may not know that your 300EX hub and your 400EX hub will slide right on a, a 185S, a 200S. You can slide it on the, the 200ES for that matter. The splines on these bikes are all the same except for the 250R, and the 350X. Those two bikes have a different size axle, different spline count, so you cannot interchange the hubs between those. But the new modern four-wheelers, your 300EX, your 400EX, those wheels, tires, and hubs will slide right on these 200Xs. They'll slide right on your 185S. I've done it, you've seen it on this channel before. I had that setup that's on Van Halen down there. We took that setup off of a 185S and that was a blast. People ask me, what's the first thing, what's the first mod I would do to a three-wheeler? If it was me, it's the same mod I do to four-wheelers. When I bring them in and I'm gonna be riding them, my style of riding condones to, to wider is better. Uh, tight trails, I have to be more careful, but I'm not a big jumper, so that's not an issue for me. First thing I want to do to a bike is I want to widen it out. I want to get it as wide as I can comfortably. You'll be amazed at what a two inch spacer will do. Net you four inches total. Remember, whatever, if you put two inches on the left and two inches on the right, that's four inches total. So you can do that one of two ways really easily. And with the market of the way things are priced these days, it's a little sketchy when you watch this. Right now you can buy used 300EX and 400EX hubs cheaper than you can buy new 
aftermarket wheel spacers. And so me personally, if I had a choice between wheel spacers and hubs, I would take a hub every single time. I feel that it's better. You have one less joint, one less set of lug nuts to come loose, one less weak point between a factory hub and a spacer in a wheel than a hub that has spacing built into it. And so if you were to go out and buy just a factory hub and put it on your bike, you would end up with a plus four right out of the gate, which is what this looks like right here. This is a plus four because it's 300 EX hubs on a factory axle. These are Honda wheels. Okay, now your Honda wheels are gonna change a little bit depending on which one you're running, but you can run the factory wheel that you have. It's not a bolt, pro a bolt pattern issue. Um, and they will bolt right on. Now, that being said, your 185 and your, your 200 ES and your 200 E's and you can take 300 modern hubs like 300 EX hubs and you can slide right on that axle but what it's going to do is it's going to change your bolt pattern you will no longer be able to run that 144 bolt pattern um, that you're used to and so be mindful of that if you do a hub swap you probably will have to change the wheels out. That's not necessarily a bad thing. You just need to know that going in, that you are gonna also have to find some wheels and some tires. So here's what I'd recommend to you. I'd recommend trying to find some wheels and tires to use online, like a marketplace ad. Uh, a lot of the guys are, are trying to sell their wheels and tires so they can upgrade to get you know, a larger size or a more aggressive tread pattern or something like that. It's a great opportunity for you to come in and, and, and pick up some cheap aluminum lightweight wheels off a 300EX or a 400EX. They're on eBay, you can find them there, or you can find them local to wherever you're at on Marketplace. Either way, it's, it's a good deal. Um, I actually found these as you see them. Mounted, balanced, aired up, ready to go. They're not balanced, but mounted up, ready to go. I bolted them right on my, on my bike. I think I gave 50 bucks for those wheels and tires. That was a deal right there. I was driving down the road and I got a little tire store in town and they had them sitting outside by the road, you know, just like on display. And I was like, locked up the brakes, spun the truck around, went back and said, hey, where do those come off of? And the guy says, I don't know, they're off a of Honda. I said, I'll take them, 50 bucks. Wheels, tires, good to go. If you've got multiple bikes running around, those come off of somebody's 250R. I, I don't know where it came from. Um, got the matching gold wheel in the front. That's a good bike. I like that look. I think the gold wheels look good on it. Pay homage to the 250R. But that's it. Not gonna be a long video this week. I'm sorry. It's just, uh, it's been a lot going on. We did, uh, we were having some 350X problems right now. The motor's back together, just kind of for you you guys to keep up weekly. We've got our, it's rebuilt. I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail on this one. I'll give you kind of a, an overlap of what's been done. It's in the frame and we've got another issue that this raised its head. And so we're tackling that now. Uh, we still have a will it run on this bike. We just picked it up last week. That's, that was our road trip bike. That's our 200X85. Um, haven't done anything to it. It's just like you saw it when we brought it off the trailer. Uh, it's going to be a nice bike. I don't know where I want to go with it. It's probably, I really want to get back on this one. I feel that I've kind of turned my back on that one. Um, brought it in, got it running, and then parked it. And I just think it deserves more than that. It's, a, it's really a really good bike. Maybe we can do a comparison between the two. Kind of shows you what your money gets. I think that could be a good video. Both of these bikes were bought in non-running condition for two different price points, but they are both exactly the same year making model bike. Two different owners and two different lives they've led for sure. But anyways, that's for another video. But today I just wanted to kind of touch base on axles and, and probably the first mod I would do to a three-wheeler would be to put a wider setup on it. I'm not gonna say a wider axle, but a wider setup. Whether you put an aftermarket axle in it, they Durablue still in business today, you can still get a plus four axle, I'm certain of. You may be able to still get a plus six. I don't know. That thing is a monster. It is a plus six axle over stock. It's, uh, it's crazy, I've never seen one before. But that's really cool. But you don't have to go that far. You can do wheel spacers if you wanna do that. But I would advise you to go and get a set of newer modern hubs. Those hubs will bolt up to your factory wheels and you will gain the same amount of spacing. But I just feel that they're stronger. And that's my opinion. 
and and somebody you know could come along and go no wheel spacers are just as strong and they may be but i still feel every time you have a bolt on item it's an opportunity for something to come loose something not to seat properly a, a, a failure point an opportunity for failure if you can eliminate opportunities for failure you'll be better off and so when it comes to wheels and wheel spacers and hubs if you're just going to push your wheels out two inches per side two and a half inches per side you can get that with a 300 ex hub or a 400 ex hub and then if you want to add spacers you can add spacers but if you want to go wider than that at that point in time i would recommend getting a factory wheel off of 300 es or 400 es wheel that would gain you another two inches so now you're four out from where you started eight total which is huge and I think you'll like it I think I think the whole bike will ride different whether it's a hardtail bike or a suspended bike you will find that the bikes are more stable at speed they're easier to slide around corners it's just all around a, a, a better experience I, I'll even use the S word I think it's a little safer with a wider footprint and that I'll say that because four-wheelers are the same way um, the wider your vehicle is if you look at race cars that are on racetracks they, they kick the tires as far out as they can. They want the biggest, widest stance they can get, and that's for cornering. Same can be said for three-wheelers and four-wheelers, Odysseys or anything else you're riding. Width is where it's at. So there we go. That's this week's video. Check them out. That's a whole lot of buck going on right there, ain't it? 49 and a half inches. That's, that's crazy. I like it, though. As always, thanks for watching, liking, sharing, and subscribing. We are going to hit 5,000 subscribers this weekend. We are we're well on our way. It's there. We, we're trying to, I'm trying to hit 10,000 subscribers this year. Uh, that's my goal. December 30th, I hope to hit 10,000. I'm going to let you know. If so, um, you know, y'all be the second to know. But thank you all for participating in that and, and liking and subscribing. I will tell you that uh, I've been getting a lot of comments about uh, the subscriptions and the notifications. YouTube has changed a lot this year. If you go down to your subscribe button, be sure and hit the subscribe button. But where the bell is, you have three different levels of turn, you know, turning the bell or hitting the bell. You can have uh, no notifications, some notifications, or all notifications. So if you like three wheelers and you enjoy the channel and you want to keep up, be sure and hit that all notifications so you get them as soon as we drop them. But yeah, it's, uh, it's been a busy week. I'll just tell you, I really wanted the 350X this week. I had not planned on doing an axle review. Uh, you could probably tell that already. I really, I've got a ton of footage on this 350X. It's going to be a, a big video. It goes into detail of the rebuild on it. And uh, I just think that that bike needs to be up and running before that video airs. And so that's where we're at. It's, uh, it's almost there. So thanks again. I appreciate it. Y'all have a great day.